And a very good morning to you and to people online and to Pastor Gordon, who's looking in because having a weekend off, wedding anniversary. Jesus is my deliverer and he's everybody's deliverer. One of my favorite songs. He's one of my favorite songs. Okay, let's just begin with um, Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways before word is on my tongue. Lord, you know it completely. It's reassuring. Let us come before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time of coming together to worship you, to give you praise. We lay our service before you, those in the sanctuary, those online. Bless the words that we say the songs that we sing, the reading, the music. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right, the opening song is Your Grace and Mercy. Followed me through. And welcome within and all the musicians. Good morning, church. It's good to see you all. His grace and his mercy has brought us through. So we're gonna give him thanks by singing this song as our opening song. Interactive, by the way. <laughs> One thing. Wake us up. Life. Families. Sorry. Friends, did you say? Yes. This church. Pastors. I'm officials, government, countries. Medical staff, families. 
Okay, let's give God thanks for the world, for everything in it. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your holy name. We give you thanks for everything, for the environment, for the clouds, for the rain, for the snow, for water, for our lives. Being able to walk and breathe and eat and sleep. Laugh and cry. Father, we give you thanks for all of us. We give you thanks most of all for your Holy Spirit, which lives within us. Like God, just in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm warming up. <laughs> I'm getting there. We're getting there. God is with us. God is here with us. He helps us. Keeps us upright. So, it's welcome song. Lord, I lift your name on high. And years ago, we used to do our actions. Lord, I lift your name on high. Please be feel free. Do your own actions or not, as the case may be. But I'm going to do something up here. But uh, uh, worship the Lord. It's all about the Lord. Lord, I lift. <laughs> If you can, stand and join me as we lift the Lord on high together. church the reading this morning is taken from mark 4 verses 35 to 38 jesus calms the storm jesus calms the storm 
That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? There ends the word. Amen. Shorter reading. Okay. okay, morning church. Morning everyone. Morning and welcome to City Road Baptist Church. Welcome to our Holy Communion service and also today's Visitors Sunday. Uh, I think we've got the same visitor who's been coming for a few weeks, so we welcome her again. Just say thank the Lord for all who are here this morning and we welcome you in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. If you're online and it's the first time you're joining us, we welcome you and pray that you will continue to, you know, visit us um, as we join in fellowship. If you're online as well and you want to join in our communion, it's the first um, fourth Sunday of the month that we're having communion. You know, we change our communion um, dates and, and, and uh, time of the month. So please, if you're online, you might need to prepare some crackers or uh, bread, white bread, or some you know, juice and join us in our communion. Welcome to anyone who's been away uh, and have recently returned. Think of anyone who's been away for a long time. Um, but you know, with those who've been ill, we just give God thanks and praise for all who are here this morning. And you know, we give God thanks and praise for all those who are working in the background during the week, who are here this morning sharing their gifts. You know, um, it's a commitment. And we're doing it not for our own glory, but for the glory of the Lord. Whatever we do, we do it with sincerity and we give our time. And you know, God blesses us because of what we've done. So it's not about our glory, it's about the glory of the Lord that whatever we do. So we need to just give God thanks and praise that he will continue to minister to each and every one. Thank you, Michael. Michael standing in for Pastor Gordon, standing in the gap, as we say. And also we welcome our brother, Dr. Gregory Roberts, who will be bringing the word today. And we wait patiently, you know, to see the message that the Lord has laid on your heart for us today. And I just pray we will be blessed by it. And we pray the Holy Spirit not only move within us, but among us. And that, you know, when we leave today, we would have been uplifted. Housekeeping. Um, please, if you haven't already done so, please turn your mobile phone off or put them on silence. Uh, also, um, toilet facilities are through the door on my right, the double doors. You go through and they're on the right, as you know. Fire alarm, our fire alarm is not due to be tested, so if it does go off, please, you will be escorted from the sanctuary, the safest route, depending on where you are in the building. Um, and you know, I always say it's a good thing when you come into a building to look where your fire exits are. Uh, tithes and offering, our tithes and offering, still we are exiting by the, the back door. Uh, that will be changing from the 3rd of July. And if you're online, you can visit our website and uh, you know make your donation that way. I hope everyone's got a newsletter, uh, one of the notice sheet. It's got a lot of information on, and I won't be reading all of it uh, going through, but just highlighting. You know, we've got so much things going on at the moment. Tomorrow, uh, Foot Pastor Gordon's office is open. He will be here. Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, so his office is open tomorrow and I always say, you know, just give him a ring before you come to make sure that he is available. Tuesday we have um, the home groups here and we've got home group hosted by Brother Lester 
and I was given uh, the word for this week is understanding. I understand that he's probably not going to be there, but I presume he's made arrangements for someone to lead. 7 p.m. we have home group hosted by Deacon Les Marie, and that's in Zoom. And the theme is the life of Paul, uh, looking at the life of Paul, the apostle. Wednesday, the 29th of June, 12 o'clock, we have the, both the home group, sorry, the, the well-being group and the domino group starting at 12 o'clock. And at 7 p.m. we will have Bible study on Zoom, that's led by Pastor Gordon, <coughs> and they continue to look at Job's, and this week it will be Job's response to Bildad. And the scripture is from Job 9, 1 to 35. And on Thursday, there is no home group here, um, but those of us who attend that session, uh, Romans chapter 3, sorry, 13, that should be, sorry, Romans 13, chapter 13 to 17 is what we are supposed to read. So that's chapter 13 to 17, I think we all know that as well. Friday the 1st, we have got choir practice here, that's the 1st of July, and then on Saturday the 2nd of July, uh, we have got our monthly prayer meeting, we've always had monthly prayer meeting, even when we have our festival, those who can attend, please attend. And then we have our music festival starting at um, 1.30. Now there are those who are involved in preparing for that, so you obviously I'm sure you've arranged uh, with those who are leading on, on different aspects what time you will be here. Uh, you should have been told what time to arrive to start to prepare for the, for the event. And please continue to promote it you know, to, to those around. And, and, and that starts at 1.30 and finishes around 7.30. We usually finish a bit earlier. Pray that, you know, it'll be a wonderful time. We hope, you know, our neighbors, we've invited the neighbors to come along and, you know, very leaflets in various places. Sunday, uh, 3rd, we are back here again. And 10.30, we have pre-service worship, 10.45, um, with the uh, church choir in here. And then on the 3rd of July as well, we, as I said, we have changes going on. There will be a change in the way we collect our tithes and offerings. Our tithes and offerings will be actually collected during service. We're going back now to some of what we used to do. So, you know, we're gradually uh, returning to normal. And we will also be leaving the sanctuary from the front instead of going around. So next week there are changes happening um, in, you know, in the sanctuary. Your um, prayer uh, request and also any suggestions. We've got the prayer request box there. Please do write your prayer request and put them in the box. And also we have got the suggestion box. Please, if you have any suggestions, we have discussed it, we will, we will discuss whatever you put forward and you will get a response. So please make any suggestions and especially we've got the centenary anniversary coming up next week. If you have any ideas as how to how we celebrate, please put those in and we will discuss it. The deacons have got a meeting on the 11th of July to look at those. So any, you know, any, so any uh, suggestions would be welcome before then. And then on Monday the 4th of July, we've got our monthly prayer and fasting. A time of prayer, fasting and testimonies. Please come along if you're able to. And then we've changed also our visitors Sunday. The Visitors Sunday now will be the third Sunday of the month, so our next Visitors Sunday will be on the 17th of July, okay? And on the 31st of July, we have, um, we're going to have a church meeting, so obviously there will be some discussions there. Any ideas you've got, please bring them and any questions that we can you know, address. And on the back, there's a lot of information one of the things we've said about um, Saturday, please, if we have to comply with regulations relating to allergen, uh, allergies or allergens, 
uh, because we know a lot of people are allergic to certain food, especially nuts and dairy products, which are the commonest one. Please, if you are cooking, preparing anything, make sure you can identify what ingredients you've used. And um, Aurelia will be dealing, she's dealing with that aspect of it. Um, you will be asked just to identify what you, you know, ingredients you use. So we are complying with the rules. Because if there are any issues, then we are liable. We're not excluded anymore. So please, there are no, there are lists by the food uh, donation list. There's a list in the corridor uh, on the notice board, and there's one in the kitchen as well. You know, for so people to look at and just to see what, you know, what what is included. The streaming of service again. I will bring that up, please. You know especially with children and adults who do not want to, please read, you know, that you are directed to the seats um, uh, and, and please sit in there if you do not want to be on, on the video. And as I said, our festival, please come along and do uh, invite others to come along. And I've mentioned our prayer and fasting. There's prayer request, prayers as well. There's so much going on. So many people of our members of our conversation our congregation are not well at the moment. Please pray for them and their families. Remember Pastor Gordon and Maxine who are away. Pray God will bring them back safely. Pray for our children, bereavements. Uh, you know, we might not know about some of them, but we know there are some bereavements uh, attached to those linked to the church. So please remember, you know, there's so many things going on at the moment. And, um, Thought for the week, you know, I, I reflected on this in respect of last Sunday. And the thought for the week is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 to 8. And Paul says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. As I say, whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. So, thank you very much. And a big thank you to uh, Pam for reading and for Pearlie for all those notices, you know, as well. Um, Saturday is the music festival. We invite your neighbours, please come along. Food and songs and coming together and giving God all the glory. Okay, let us bring before our Lord those many notices, those many things that's on for the week. Lay it all before the Lord. So, Father, again, we thank you for this, uh, this sanctuary, for all that goes on within it. And we ask you to move amongst us. And all those activities on that's planned, we know that is to your glory. Help us to uh, deliver those to your satisfaction. It's for reaching out, it's for extending your love, your presence between ourselves and to one another, to those outside as well. Because really it's all before you, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Testimonies and exaltations. Yes, if there are any. Okay, let me begin with one. Two weeks ago, I arrived late at um, 11.35, okay? And I don't recommend it, but I had to take my son to work, and I got back. As I came down City Road, all the cars on the front, when I turned into Ravenshaw, all the cars in the car park, the lights was on. And when I walked across the grass, I just had to park all the way down the bottom because it, you know, it was so congested. We walked across the grass. The, the singing, 
And I thought to myself, that's a beacon. You know, it's what's showing the people on the buses, people walking past, that this is a God place and there's people here worshiping. And that speaks loudly. Okay, so continue to worship. Yes, please attend. You know, it's a beacon for the, uh, the uh, community, the community. Okay, that's my testimony. Is there anyone else? If not, we'll, ah, Pearlie. Thank you. Where's my round of applause? <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Please, please. She's using the mic. Hello again, church. Oof. I just want to think about last Sunday. I've been reflecting on last Sunday all week and what happened. I know God sometimes use a very simple situation to bring a message. And last week, Fathering Sunday, the words were there, the sermon was there, but God also produced an example of what it is to be fatherhood, the security, the love, the support, when our youngster who read the, the scripture, you know, he, 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 he became emotional and yet he was able to continue because of the love and the support and the encouragement that he got. And for me, that wasn't just something that happened. That was Fathering Sunday. Very low key, nothing too extravagant. But in the midst of that, God used that situation of a little one to teach us, to encourage us. And that, you know, when times are difficult, and this is why we fellowship, you know, we have those around us who support us, we have the word, we trust that God is going to see us through. And that reminded me of when some years ago, those of you who were here, when we had walking with Jesus, and we had those three youngsters who came, literally, walking with Jesus, walking from London to Scotland and on their way back, knocking on John's door and um, Catherine's door during the night and then coming to see us and then joining us. And for me, for me, that was such an event and I never forget that and I keep reflecting it. God is in the midst. And we need to hear, listen, and see what he's doing amongst us. Because last week for me reminded me of that walking with Jesus when he produced three youngsters who were walking, living, walking with Jesus. So, you know, I just think last week is just, was just something that for me was special. Thank you. That's all. Praise the Lord, church. Praise God. You know, I was saying to my brother um, while I was at the door, we use the word rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. And rejoice means to shout for joy, jump for joy. That's what it is. We rejoice in the Lord. We jump for joy. And um, Thessalonians tell us that rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks, because that is the will of God, God's will. Um, <clears throat> now, I will tell you, and I don't, some of you may know this, some of you may not experience it yet, but you will. The minute you make a decision that you're gonna do something for the Lord, the enemy is gonna come at you left, right, and center. Anybody experience that? Yes. Let me hear an amen. Yes. Amen. The minute you decide that you're gonna do something for God, you're gonna step out and do something for God, the enemy is going to come at you. Um, recently, I was going away with a group of my workout buddies. And I says, Lord, you know the group I'm going with. And you know who I am and what I stand for. Just help me, be with me, that I will 
be an ambassador for you wherever I go, because that's always my prayer wherever I go, to be an ambassador for Christ. Um, <clears throat> we were flying from Birmingham, and we got together. On the flight, next to me was apparently the guy who was going to be with us. And uh, <laughs> every word that young man made came out of his mouth was swearing. He's like it was something he could not help himself. And I said, God, is this what I'm going to be putting up with this week? Um, I didn't say anything to him. I didn't even hold a conversation with him. Maybe I should, I don't know. But when we got to our point, the person who organized it just said to him, listen, I've had to come through the flight on this, this language, and I hope this is not what I'm go we're going to put up with this week. And I think he spoke to them. The Sunday we were going out on a trip somewhere to walk in the sea, whatever, and um, there was two, two vans. I went on one at first, and I came off, and the other one had less people in, so I went in. And the lads on that vehicle, the language, it was a Sunday morning. And I, said, I turned around to them and I said, listen, guys, we're not going to be putting up with this language um, through this, this, uh, during this time, neither through this week. And the organizer turned around and was very harsh with them, spoke very harshly. So when I came off, I took two other guys together and I said, listen, you know, you don't need to speak this way. This is not, you don't need to express yourself this way. And I was very calm. And it's, it's, it, broke his, it, it broke his heart because he was telling me on the Monday that the way I came over and just, just put my arm around him was talking to him. It made such a difference. And those guys, they were, I wouldn't say best behavior, but you know, because I said, this is the way we talk and this is the way we do it. But I said, it don't have to be that way. You can express yourself in another way and people will hear you. So friends, this is just what I'm just trying to say. When, you, when the Lord directs your path to do something, you're going to do it, but you're going to come up against challenges. But Christ said not to worry because we're going to face challenge and we will overcome. And I have overcome because, I've, you know, I yeah, see them now at the gym and they're always, you know, coming up and having a chat. And, and God is good. We just have to believe that God is able to do whatever he says we will do. We just need to, to um, carry out whatever God tells us to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, sisters, for those testimonies and exaltations as well. And we come to a time of worship. Is anyone else? No? Oh, we only come to a time of worship and praise. And um, Vivian and... Uh, Fitz and Dixie would lead us. But Psalm 150, if it's, if it's there, it says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Ah, there it is. <laughs> praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Read it with me. Praise him with the resounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Cymbals. Thank you. Oh. Um, praise him with resounding cymbals. Resounding cymbals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has praise the Lord. That's everybody, including myself. We have breath to praise the Lord. Let's praise Him. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord if you can. If you're able, stand and join me as we sing. These are the days of Elijah. Amen.
we believe it like we know it. Let's go. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Jehovah. Oh, there are many imposters, but there's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to sing Draw Me Close to You. Um, this is a song of consecration, and you know, this is us drawing close to God. He says, if you draw close to Him, He'll draw close to us. And that's what we want, isn't it? Amen.
Hallelujah. Let's give him all the glory. Amen. It's a nice song. It's the first time I've heard that. And I've just listened for the first verse. But the word says, so you deserve it all. You deserve the glory. And I looked at one gentleman back there, and it was deep in meditation. Okay, thinking about all the songs, all the words. Praise of intercession. Thank you, Sylvia. Sylvia, that come. <laughs> thank you. And before um, the children leave, uh, we have a ministry song, and then Dr. Greg Roberts will bring the sermon. So, yeah. Wonderful prayer. Praise. Thank you. It's a mystery song and it's one called His Eyes is on the Sparrow. Ruth. <laughs> His Eyes on the Sparrow. Discovery 
bow her eyes. He watches me. Watches me. It's, 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 you know, it's a bit like Google, isn't it? Google could tell me where we've been. What I've done, well, what I've done, where we've been. How long it took, how long it stayed. And shows me all the pictures of the place that I visited. God was there millions and millions, trillions of years before Google. And his eyes is on us. And he walks in front of us, he goes with us everywhere. That's what we are showing. When we are down, lift us up. You know? His eyes is on us. If you can welcome Dr. Greg. And while he's coming, the junior church have left, but they left a bit early, but we just pray for them. Before they, you know. Father, we thank you for the young people and for their teachers. Fill them with your love and encouragement. Let the study find root, plant seed in their lives. In Jesus' name. And we pray for Dr. Greg as he brings us the word. And the theme is God cares or He cares. And He cares for all of us. So we pray for Dr. Greg. Praise the Lord. Let your word speak true. Let it take root in our hearts. Let it grow. Let it bring fruit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm glad to be here with you, and I'm happy to see everybody. <laughs> uh, Sister Gloria wasn't looking my way, but I'm happy to see you too. <laughs> um, God has been good, all the time and every time. Someone commented that the scripture reading was short. The Bible says here, from St. Mark 4, verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? In the beginning of that chapter, it says that Jesus sat in a ship. And it was from this ship that he taught the people all these parables. The chapter says that even as he spoke to them, he said nothing without it being a parable. And he spent the entire day sitting, I suspect standing at times, in that vessel. And those of us who might have had some experience with boats will know that if you're sitting and standing, it's not quite the same as being on land. You really still have to balance yourself, even if you're not very conscious of it. Your body is still working. And so at the end of that, we can see why Jesus was tired. He wasn't just speaking like when he was on land. His body had to be balancing against the different forces from the, from the water and so on. So by the time he was finished, he was tired. There was no need to say that he was tired, but physically he was. 
And the way he, he slept right through that storm showed that he was deadbeat. <laughs> the Bible says that it was a wind, a mighty wind. There was a flotilla of different vessels around Jesus's, or around the one that Jesus was in. And this wind would take up the waves and the squall, dump the waves of water into the boat, and the boat was now full. And it was at this point when the disciples were no longer able to take water out as quickly as it was coming in. When there was what you probably would call a deficit in terms of what is taken out by them and what is coming in. Coming in faster than they could take it out. Reached a point. Their attention shifted. Whether Jesus could do something about it or not. He was still asleep and the question came, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Not just Jesus, not just the disciples, all of them together. Carest thou not that we perish? Hallelujah. God is a good God. God is faithful, so the Bible says, so we believe. God made the world and all that therein is and everything has come from him. And to him everything goes. But there are times in our lives, in that immediate moment of need, when this question becomes relevant. God has been there from eternity. To eternity. Brother Michael speaks of millions and trillions of years ago, by whatever measure of time, God was there. And he will always be there. But there are times when in that singular minute, even though we know he's God, the question becomes relevant. Do you care about what? I am going through right now. Not what you have done for me before. Not what you say that you'll do for me or for my family. But right now, nothing else matters except this minute. All the promises, they are great. Comfort into the soul. But that's in the moment of reflection. In this moment, of danger. Do you care, O oh Lord? Do you care? The way the question was put, prefaced by calling Jesus Master, tells us that there was an expectation of care. In law, they call it a duty of care. <laughs> you are our master. We have a right to expect care from you. You called us and we answered. You said to us that we should walk with you and we have been walking with you. Peter got a bit bright after listening to your statement, Jesus. And he said, Lord, what happened to us who have followed you? What will happen to us materially? And you, Lord, said to him, no man that follows me, that leaves mother, father, houses, and land. will not be 
recompensed in this life by several fold. You said that, and that was a promise. You declared it, and so it is. But right now, you're sleeping, and we're perishing. Right now, it is as if our needs are not even acknowledged by you. You did not raise a hand to lift up a bucket. You did not use your hand to throw water over the side of the ship. You have been sleeping. We literally had to wake you up. Do you not care that we perish? Do you not care that we perish? Often the God of the Old Testament is presented to us as a big issue God. He deals with the big things. The nation. You know, winning wars. He sends his prophet to talk to, to, to all the people about the wickedness that they are doing. About society. Yes, it relates to the individual person. Many of them rebuked by the Lord. Many of them rescued by the Lord. But the bigger issues seem to have dominated in the Old Testament. It was about God of the nation. God of the family. To some extent, David bucked the trend when he would speak to God like God was right there for him. When he would ask things of God that other people wouldn't. When he would cry out in the Psalms for rescue from a personal place of pain. The general trend of the Old Testament was not quite that. It was more about the big things. God and the big things. So when Jesus came and he started to talk about my father. It drove them balmy. Who are you speaking to, Jehovah? Who are you referring to, Adonai? Are you talking about the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, our father? Bright enough are you to call him Papa? Because Jesus was bringing us, bringing them a picture of our father being Papa, caring, not just about the big things, not just about Judaism with all its rules, not just about the laws and the prophets and all these standards. Jesus was presenting a picture of a caring God. And so after he spoke When he went up on the mountain and all the people gathered around him, he referred to little things. Which one of you, by worrying, can add or subtract anything from your life? Not even a second, not even a minute. Which one of you can cause more hairs to grow on your head just by thinking about it? No. Not even a single strand of hair. But yet he cares about every single strand of hair. Whether we have them or we don't. He spoke to them. He said, you guys, you go into the markets. Because you're no longer really rural people. You don't live in the bush anymore. You go into the markets and you see what's happening. The guys who live in the rural places, they come and they are selling sparrows. Two sparrows. For what the English translates as a father. Two sparrows for money that nobody cares about. Yet your father would not allow a single one of those sparrows to fall to the ground. 
without his explicit permission. Does he care? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does he care? The disciples heard those words. But what was happening to them at that point was what you'd call an existential threat. He threatened their lives, not just in a small way like somebody said, listen, I'll beat you up. That doesn't matter. This was a case where they knew that despite their experience, they could not swim to shore. They had lost sight, I suspect, of the other smaller vessels. They couldn't help them. It was an existential threat. And where was Jesus? Sleeping in the stern of the boat. We could refer to this as probably the ultimate display of carelessness. Now those of us who have had children, mom tired, mom falls asleep, baby starts crying and baby crawls about, grandma comes, how can you be sleeping when the baby is there? <laughs> grandma went through it too, you know. <laughs> 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 what grandma probably would have done, especially if it were in the old country and the old days, tie the baby with a long piece of cloth so that the baby would have a certain distance to go. Or put the baby in a, in a, in a wash pan or a basket so that she could catch a little snooze. Jesus was in deep sleep, oblivious to the storm. And it's remarkable. We could say that he knew that everything would be all right, so he wouldn't worry about that. We could argue that the disciples should have had confidence to say, listen, if Jesus is sleeping, then it's not so bad. <laughs> we don't care how much water gets into this boat. It's not too bad as long as Jesus is sleeping. But we could also understand their situation. They were staring death in the face, and Jesus was asleep. It is not wrong, I think, for them to have said, Master, don't you care whether we perish? When we are in harsh situations, these questions will come. And it's easy to forget the testimonies and the experiences. <coughs> And it doesn't matter somebody coming and quoting scripture as much as they can. This is my situation and you don't know what I feel. Don't tell me about your story. Who feels it knows it. It is also times like this when we question if God is really there. We're not questioning God's existence. We're questioning whether he cares about what we're going through at this particular psychological point in time. <coughs> it is also times like this when we question, and many times question without asking God for the strength to continue to believe. It is at times like these when we become susceptible to the workings of the enemy. It's times like these when we seek God's substitutes. When we seek God compliments, you know, we want something else to help God. It's times like these when we think we, could, we should draw on what the friends have been saying. On something we heard from our parents. On something that we saw happening some time before. 
and we question if God is really there. Drawing on God's substitutes, meaning that there are, these things operate in the place of God in our minds, is a dangerous thing and a form of idolatry. God is God and there is none like God. Him alone are God. And it doesn't matter what we're going through. He is Lord. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. What is our identity? We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. So as for the duty of care, it remains and it will be exercised despite what we're feeling and what we're going through. It's not the doctor who is God when we are feeling pain. So we do not become dependent on, more, on medicine, modern or otherwise. It is not our jobs that really give us security, economic and financial. No. We have seen jobs come and we have seen jobs go. We're faced with an economic situation in this country that some of you might can remember when you were very, very young in the 1970s and interest rate and inflation started to go through the roof. Young people, including young economists, they have got no idea of interest rate passing 10%. Not even the econometric models draw on these things. But you have seen them. Yet these times, they are coming again. Are we going to look to the government, despite the fact that they do have a duty of care, we would be foolish though, because we have seen their failures over and over again. But we look to the Lord, the giver and the sustainer. Does he care? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. You see, we have to acknowledge our failures. It makes sense. We have to acknowledge sometimes when things get rough. We can't fool ourselves and think, you know what, I will put my head in another land and don't even pay attention to the fact that this represents a disturbing situation. There are some who think that's the best way to go about it. There are some who try to achieve this land of not thinking and not being concerned by various means, whether they draw for the bottle or they draw for the smoke or they draw for whatever. We who have come to Christ know that because our master is in charge, we don't have to draw for these things. Hallelujah. Despite the fact that it looks so dark that there is no way, there is no resolution. He has left a track record. Evidence of his power and ability. And not just his power and ability. Because many people have power, you know. Many, many have authority and many have ability. But he has also left evidence of his care for us, of his care for us. And sometimes that is so important. That's what gives us the strength to face the next day. Not because of simply his power, but because he loves us. He loves us. He loved us when we ourselves didn't even love ourselves. He loved us when, if someone were to show us a picture of, in fact, we didn't even like to look at ourselves, whether, or, or even like to consider 
how we are because it broke our hearts. We were uncomfortable with who we were. And he still loved us. Consider it now that we have been recipients of his grace, brought into his family. He himself refers to us as special, royal, holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you think you stopped caring? He cares for us. He cares for us. Bless be the thought. And let us draw on the thought that he cares for us. He has not abandoned his duty of care towards us. Can a mother's tender care cease towards the child she bears? The song man says, yes, she may forgetful be. But I, the Lord, will remember thee. In those private moments, when we feel like we're facing these existential issues, when we get news that we can't countenance, when we feel like the bottom of our bellies have fallen somewhere as we belly bottom drop, he cares. He's not just there. He's there with care. Is there. And so we now have a fuller picture of who God is through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit coming into our lives will glorify Jesus. Glorify the man who walked amongst us. Glorify the man who tired and had to fall asleep. The Holy Spirit teaches us to glorify Jesus and to reveal to us who God is. That God is not just the big picture God. He's not just the God concerned with all the big marvelous things that will make us look good and make it seem like, oh, we serve this great, big, wonderful God because our church is big. And our preachers dressed nice? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's also God who is concerned about your situations, the tough times, and the failures. And some of those things that you don't want anybody to hear about. Some of those things that you don't even want to think about. He's concerned. And he's saying to you, listen, check this out. The minute you ask me for forgiveness, you have been forgiven. The minute you ask me for forgiveness, you have been forgiven. Receive forgiveness and walk in the beauty of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, let your name be glorified and honored among your people. You have brought us life. And you have brought us an understanding of how great you are. And that you have authority over everything and every situation. And that through you, we have authority. And you are also saying to us, that every situation, not just the ones, Lord, that are worthy of news, not just the ones that we can confidently talk about when we give a testimony, not just the ones that we have to say to close family members, but even the ones that we are afraid to reflect on, you care about them. Lord, we come to you with confidence. And we ask that today your people will be brought closer to you, Lord. 
Your people will know that you feel their pain. You're touched by the feelings of their infirmities. Hallelujah. And you have been through the things you have been through so that you can understand and you can help them go through what they are going through. Abide with them, Lord. We ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Greg. And um, words, you know, thank you. God cares. His eyes is on us. And he's with us in the good times, in the not so good times. And he knows everything. And when we feel as if there's no God or he's sleeping, he's still there. Thank you for all those wonderful words. Okay. We enter into communion, and it's an open communion, and Pastor God will speak about this later on, um, one of his sermons. But if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the only criteria for sort of having communion. It's, it's, uh, I haven't got to be a member of this church, or other churches. I'm as long as you love the Lord Jesus Christ, take communion. So we'll um, start on the left side, this side, come along, take the sacraments and go back. Meanwhile, we have Vivian that will sing um, at the cross. So can we begin with this?
God. <clears throat> As we come to the table of remembrance, we just want to give God thanks for his mercy, for his grace, and for this wonderful gift that he's given us, the gift of life. Father, we just want to thank you for your love, for your people, that you came in flesh and gave your life for us, O oh God. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the bread. Lord, you instituted this feast, this banquet, for your children. And Lord, you said, we take this, we do this as often as we do it, remembering you. Lord, we just want to remember what you did for us on Calvary's cross. And Lord, knowing that you are always there. And as the word said this morning, sometimes we feel, we, we feel dejected, we feel empty, we're wondering where you are. But Lord, you said you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. You care for us and you said we should cast our burdens on you. So Lord, as we partake this bread and this um, wine, which is symbolic of your body and your blood, Lord, you said you will not eat this, this um, again until we meet with you in heaven. Father, we look forward to that day. We will, will share in that bread, that feast with you. But while we're here now, O oh God, as we share with our brethren, with the brothers and sisters, Lord, we just share it in love and just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, as we take the bread, which is your, a symbol of your body, and the blood, which is your blood, and we know there's resurrection power in your body and in your blood. So we just give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lesmary. And it says in scripture, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And it says, this is my body broken for you. Do this for, in remembrance of me. Let us take bread and eat in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. While we were still sinners, he died for us. And then on the same night, he took the wine and he blessed it. And he says, this is my blood that spilled for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the wine and drink in remembrance of Jesus Christ. sing the second verse. Uh, Lester Good, that's one. Well. Babs Banton. Sean. Jack. Jack. Jack Richards. 
Michelle. What's your name? Glory Fuller. Glory Fuller. Vida McCarthy. Peter Harrison. Peter Harrison. Sean. Sean. David Hendrickson, my son. Jean Sorry. Cadine Lees. Lees and Jean Bullock. Jean Bullock. William Morris. William Morris. Charmaine. Charmaine. Many more. God, God knows everything and, he, and his eyes is there. He's with us in the storm. He's with us I mean, our sickness. Father, we bring these folks before you. We ask for your healing touch in their lives. Lord, have mercy. But for those who've been affected by the wars, by famine, by sickness, poor health, by financial problems, by psychological problems, by physical problems, by all the problems that's caused by sin in this world. But you are still there. We bring them before you. In Jesus' name. We bring ourselves as well. Forgive us for the sins at the cross. Yeah, please. Yeah. Was it for crimes that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories here. When Christ the mighty maker died for man, the creature's sin. Thus might I hide my blushing face while his dear cross appears. for the benediction. If you need prayer, we'll end the live stream after the benediction. And please come forward to receive prayer. Dr. Greg will be here as well. And deacons. Um, so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May the blessings of the Lord God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest them in rain and abide with all of us evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. The live stream will end now.
If, if, if you if you have a need for, for prayer, please come forward and our sister will sing.